because God got a season for you. And if you trust him, he's going to bring it to pass. And when he brings it to pass, God will blow your mind. before him. We're excited today. We have coming in the dynamic R.L. White Gospel Chorus. Oh my God. 
gospel chorus. Let's give them another hand. And now presenting for us an awesome, anointed worship service to get us started. They are the deacons of Mount Ephraim Baptist Church. And they are incredible. Just watch. Good morning, Mount Ephraim. Morning. I just can't stop praising his name. How about that? I'll be reading for your hearing this morning coming from Revelations 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto the servants which must shortly come to pass and, sent and signify it by his angels unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God, of the testimony of Jesus Christ, and, all of, of, and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and that, that heareth the word of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which, is, which are before his throne yes. and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the, of the kings of the earth. And to him that love us and wash us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father to him be glory and dominion forever. I have read six verses of Revelation 1. May it add a blessing to the readers, the doers, and the most for all his word. May that be a blessing to each and every one of you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Ancient of Days and Grand Instructor. Once again, dear Father, we find ourselves in the need of prayer. We also come, dear Father, not only just to pray and to ask you for your blessing, but we come to praise your name, dear Father, for the wonderful things you have done in our lives. We glorify and bless your name, dear Father. We adore you for all that you have done. For not only are you just God, but you are God and God all by yourself. Not only do you rule, dear Father, but you're super rule. There is none like you, dear Father. And so today, dear Father, we give you the highest praise. Hallelujah. Praise and glory to your name. Thank you, dear Father. For even as we look over the past week and think about the things that you have done for us, we thank you for food and for shelter. We thank you, dear Father, for fine homes and good jobs. We thank you this morning, dear Father, for our health and our strength. We thank you this morning, dear Father, for a fine church home. We thank you this morning, dear Father, for your word, for we know your word is true. We thank you this morning, dear Father, for the blood of your son. We thank you this morning for our families, dear Father. We thank you, dear Father, for teaching us right from wrong. We thank you this morning, dear Father, for teaching us how to love even when we didn't know how to love ourselves. We thank you, dear Father, for where you have brought us from. For indeed, you have brought us from a mighty long way. And dear Father, you have blessed us with many good and wonderful things. On today, dear Father, we thank you for this man and woman that you have blessed us with. In the person of Reverend Dr. R.L. White and Lorraine White, dear Father. We thank you for these two that you have blessed us with. We pray, dear Father, that you might continue to bless their health and their strength. Continue, dear Father, to bless the resources that you have given them, dear Father. And allow them, dear Father, the wisdom and the knowledge, dear Father, and the strength to continue leading your people. We also come this morning, dear Father, asking you to reach forth your hand, dear Father. Touch those that are sick and shut in in this congregation, dear Father. Even those that may be incarcerated behind prison walls, dear Father, 
For today we are certain and we know for sure, dear Father, that you can still send your word. And we know that your word, dear Father, is the most powerful force on this earth. For your word, dear Father, is still able to set the captives free. Your word, dear Father, is still able to heal and to deliver. And so this morning, dear Father, we are just asking that once we've heard your word, dear Father, once the bread has been broken by the man of God, dear Father, that we might leave these doors not the same as we came in, dear Father, but refreshed and renewed, dear Father. For indeed, we have come to the right place at the right hour. This is not just some ordinary time. You have predestined this time, even this hour, dear Father, for us to hear a word from you, dear Father. And we know that we will not leave disappointed. And in the name of Jesus, dear Father, today, we know that we have sinned. We know that we have fallen short of your glory. And in the name of Jesus, dear Father, we pray that you will forgive us of those sins, those things that we have done in our bodies that haven't been pleasing in your sight. Have mercy on us, dear Father. And when that time does come, and we must stand before the judgment bar and a just and merciful God, we pray, dear Father, that you might give us a home somewhere, dear Father, where we can praise your name forevermore, dear Father. This, dear Father, is Mount Ephraim's prayer. And we ask all these things in the name of your loving Son, our blessed Savior. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I'm bound to cross the river. I'm bound to cross the river. I'm bound to cross one more river to cross. The cross, the joy and the river. I'm bound to cross, the joy and the river. No, I'm bound to cross. I said I got one more river to cross.
evangelist, Reverend Lorraine Jacques White. Let's give our deacons a hand. Didn't they do a good job? And now we're going to have our congregational hymn by our pastor and founder, Dr. R.L. White. One of these Sundays, I'm going to surprise you all and do it myself, but not today. Y'all tell us she's in the Lord's house, so she promised that, so we're waiting on us. Let us stand and sing together, pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by. Pass me not, O oh gentle saint. Hear my own the Welcome by Reverend Michael Craig. 
Good morning, good morning, good morning, Mount Ephraim. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. We'd just like to say good morning to everybody and welcome everybody back. I know it's been a while since we've had an opportunity to gather together and worship the Lord. Praise the Lord. Is there anybody selling a birthday or an anniversary out there today? Got one birthday, two birthdays. Amen. All right, happy birthday. How about anniversary? Anybody celebrating an anniversary? Okay. Well, I'd just like to welcome you all back. This is like our third, fourth week. We're going into it, and we're doing it. Praise the Lord. Um, keep serving God. Amen? Amen. Every week, we have updates with respect to what's going on in the world and what's going on at the Mount. And our own Dr. Angela Taylor never lets us be behind in anything we need to know. Dr. Angela Taylor. Good morning, Mount Ephraim. On behalf of Dr. White, Sister White, we would like to take this opportunity to welcome our virtual con congregation to this 1045 a.m. service. At this time, if you have anyone that you would like to join us for this virtual service and for this service, please send them the link. Tell them that Mount Ephraim Baptist Church is getting ready for a high time in the Lord. Send them the link. Tell them that we're on Facebook Live. Send them our website. We would love to have them join us. And for those of you all who are watching us on Facebook Live, watching us via live streaming, please Put in the comments section where you're watching us from. We would love to give you a shout out and simply say hello. So go ahead and holler back at us. We would love to have you participate in this service. So good morning to our virtual worshipers on today. We would also like to pause and say happy birthday to those of you who are joining us virtually. That includes Sister Demita Wilder Ben, to Sister Louise Franklin, Tiffany Mosley, the Reverend Charles Ties, DeAndre Harris, Katrina Hoskins, we say happy birthday, Deacon Thomas Johnson, our very own choir directress, Dr. Kim Gore Mobley. And not, not only Dr. Kim, her son, Jamad, we say happy birthday. I'm a president of his fan club, by the way. So we say happy birthday to him, Sister Cheryl Noble, Sister Sandra Drummond, and the guy who keeps our mics hot and makes sure that we are always sanitized, Steve Young, we say happy birthday. Sister Sherry Brooks, we say happy birthday. And we missed his anniversary, but he is here today. Brother Nathaniel and Betty Jackson, we say happy anniversary. And may God continue to bless your union real good. Mount Ephraim, these are your announcements. We would like to invite you to join us every Wednesday morning at 7.30 a.m. for the prayer call with the pastor. Check our Facebook page and check our website for that telephone number and access code. We would love to have you join in. Also on Wednesdays at 7 o'clock in the evening, come back on Facebook Live to our pastor teaching worship on Wednesday. That is his teaching hour. It is a wonderful uh, lesson every Wednesday. Please tune in and join us on Saturdays at 6 o'clock p.m. On Facebook Live, we have our power, another power pack service. We would love to have you join us. And that's right, every Sunday at 7.30 a.m. and 10.45, Mount Ephraim is back in the sanctuary. We simply ask that you bring, that you be vaccinated, bring your vaccination card, wear a mask at all times, and make sure that you have, that you sanitize your hand, hands as you come into the building. Our medical staff will be at each doorpost, and we would love to have you join in. At this particular point in time, if you're in the sanctuary, we're gonna ask that you do a love check. Look to the left and look to the right. Make sure that the person sitting next to you has their mask on completely, covering up their nose and their mouth, as recommended by the CDC. We will continue to do love checks throughout the entire service because we want to make sure that every member of Mount Ephraim maintains their healthiness throughout the service, and we thank you for that. 
Also, we would like to thank you for your continued support of Mount Ephraim during this pandemic season. There isn't a day that doesn't go by that Mount Ephraim doesn't receive a phone call. To number one, thank you for the love that you are showing the community. And number two, to ask how they can continue to support Mount Ephraim. We ask that you download the Givelify app to your smartphone, to your tablet, select Mount Ephraim Baptist Church, Atlanta, Georgia, and follow the prompts to give. You can also go to our website, www.mymebc.com, click the donate button that's in the right hand corner of the screen and also follow those prompts to give. And for those of you all who enjoy the more traditional forms of giving, please make your checks, your money orders payable to the Mount Ephraim Baptist Church and mail that to Mount Ephraim Baptist Church, P.O. Box 92351, Atlanta, Georgia 30314. Again, that's Mount Ephraim Baptist Church, P.O. Box 92351, Atlanta, Georgia 30314. Mount Ephraim, as it pertains to the pandemic and COVID-19 and the vaccine, please remember that students will be returning to school starting the first week of August. Parents, I encourage you and guardians to check your school, your local school, to see what the guidelines will be for the mask mandate for your school. CDC has made recommendations. Now it is up to the school district to follow those recommendations. So Mount Ephraim is courage, encouraging all guardians to check those websites and check with your school systems so that you can make sure that your children are healthy as they return to in-school, in-person learning. Also, Mount Ephraim continues to encourage anyone and everyone, if you can and if you do qualify, to please get vaccinated. As I said this morning, I really don't believe that black doctors went to school to kill black people. So if you would, please talk to the people that you know, those medical personnel that you know, get their information, get information from them. And, if, and, and after you have done all of your study, consider getting vaccinated. If you are not going to get vaccinated, we encourage you to wear your mask at all times. The Delta variant is real. And most people, all of the people who are in the hospital now because of COVID-19 and all of the people who are dying are unvaccinated individuals. So we're asking you, if you're not vaccinated and you're not planning to get vaccinated, wear your mask at all times. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Dr. White, for allowing me to make these announcements. This concludes the announcements. And as always, Mount Ephraim, remain Mount Ephraim strong. On the edge of your seat, that's exactly where you'll be as you listen to the R.L. White Gospel Chorus take us into the awesome dynamic presence of the Lord. R.L. White, Gospel Chorus. morning. Mount Alpha. The message says that the sun is going to shine. And we're not talking about the S-U-N. We're talking about the S-O-N. We pray that you came expecting this morning to know that the sun is going to shine. I know, I hear somebody saying, but you don't know what the doctor told me. Somebody saying, but you don't know I 
I lost my job and things have been real bad during the pandemic. Somebody is saying, but you just don't know how I feel. You, you just don't know what those children are taking me through. You, you don't know about the chaos that I got going on. I don't have to know because God knows. And the sun is going to shine. All you got to do is believe it way down in your spirit, man, and know that the sun, God, the sun, is going to shine. We pray that you'll get with us this morning and just worship him and praise him and, and lift him up because he inhibits the praises of his people. Amen. Amen. Come on, choir. Declare it and decree 
the sun to the going down of the sun. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody hold you like Jesus. Go ahead. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You got to open up your mouth. You got to open up your mouth. You got to open up your mouth. sisters over here and they were soprano they, they gave it all they said we don't care if, if we outnumbered I'm going to open my mouth and say something amen now I got tricked the other week forgot to take the offering ain't going to do that no more Officers are going to come now, and those of us who have an offering to give. I see your ushers are on duty today, and they're going to bring us around from the back row. Let us stand, please, one row at a time.
Reverend Brother Avery, would you lead us in prayer? Let us pray. The eternal Father, we thank you. We thank you for our opportunity to come again and give back a portion of that which you, we, we receive. We ask that you bless this offering and these tithes and offering. We ask that you help it to manifest and grow into what to the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me thank you for your gifts. Let me thank you for adapting to our new order of service. It's important that we made some differences because we are still being telecast and by Facebook and by the computer and by any way people want to hear us all across this world. And I want to thank those of you who have come back. And I say that because it takes faith. It takes nerve to come back at a time such as this. I see some of you have not seen in a year and a half, but I'm so glad to see you. After the message today, we will be praying for those who are among us who need prayer. Sister Henrietta White is in Wellstar Cobb Hospital. She will be undergoing a heart surgery this week. I'd like for somebody who's in that group that she sings with to make sure that we minister to her. Sister Bernice Montgomery Zeke, whose husband died a few months ago, we will be praying for her today. I see Sister Lorraine Johnson's husband is here today and they have told me that she's getting much better. He's giving me us a thumbs up right now. Praise God. We will continue to pray for Brother Charles Bird until I hear that he is well. Sister Beverly Coma continues in the hospital. I don't know how it would feel to be in the hospital all this time. But there's a promise that she's about to undergo something soon that's going to make the news. And the husband will tell you about it soon. Amen. We continue to pray for the Reverend Jim Coombs who had an operation so serious that he's just now going back to the pulpit and still not as strong as he needs to be. Somebody tell him we are still praying for him. I'm gonna meet with him tomorrow, the Lord willing, to give him some encouragement to keep on holding on. We continue to pray for Deacon Shelley and Sister Veronica Smith. Amen. It was two weeks ago. He was at church singing and praising God and received a call, come home immediately, only to get there to find out that his whole house had burned down. I wanna thank those who have been letting the Smith family know that we are glad that God saved their lives 
and we are praying for his whole family. Amen. Sister Charlie Kate Hartnett is asking for prayer. Sister Annette Williams sent me a letter this week that she watches the telecast every Saturday night. Had an operation on lung cancer, but look like it's coming back. And we're going to really need to keep praying for her. As we get ready to hear from heaven, I'd like for each of us, if we would stand and sing Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Let us sing out of the depths of our hearts. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that Thou art with me. Thy rod and thou staff, they comfort me. Since we know that so well, can I get you to say that along with me, please? Yea, though I walk 
through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff. All right. Amen. Amen. I like that. Our subject today, making it through the valleys of life. Make it through the valleys of life. One of my favorite characters in the Bible was David. He was able to put into words some of his innermost thoughts. And these thoughts have guided untold millions of people through the valley of painful experiences in life. Amen. As he wrote the 23rd Psalm, where he talks about the valley of the shadows of death, I used to think that it was just a figure of speech. Amen. But I had a unique learning experience. While some years ago, we were touring in Israel. And when the guides get to know you, they're more willing to show you some extra things on the tour. Since we had been there and the guides knew us, one day he decided to show us something that I was not expecting. He said to his driver, drive up on this incline and he drove and he said I want you to get a good view of the mountain in front of us he said look hard you will see a narrow ledge and we looked and he said that ledge is called the valley of the shadow of death I said to him I did not know that that was really a place and it was so narrow that if you made one awkward step, you could fall to your death. Amen. It made clear to me something that I had never understood before. And it became clear that life can take you through some dangerous physical valleys as well as some spiritual valleys. And either one or both can destroy you if you are not determined to make it through the valleys in life. Amen. A few years later, and you know I've done a lot of traveling, I was leaving Asheville, North Carolina. Those of you who know where Asheville is, there are mountains around it. 
And I had an experience. But when I left Asheville, North Carolina, and I was on my way to Terre Haute, Indiana, it was nighttime and it was in the winter. The highway was narrow. And if I made one awkward turn on the steering wheel, I could end up falling hundreds of feet down the mountainside. And to make it more scary and dangerous, there were 18 wheelers that were throwing mud from the snow in the highway and it was falling on my windshield. I became frightened at first, but I knew I could not stop, nor could I pull over and rest. And just as fear began to overtake me, this 23rd song came into my mind. And it was reminding me that I did not have to fear because God was with me. Amen. This whole episode taught me a valuable lesson. And that is when God is with you, you don't have to fear. I was so happy when I got on the other side of that mountain and I had to stop and go to the bathroom. <laughs> You'd have been there, you would have wanted to do it too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Don't get me wrong. Even when the Lord is on your side, it was scary. Has anybody here ever been through some scary situations? And then you know that the only way you got through was that the Lord was on your side. Amen. There's also a spiritual element in this 23rd Psalm. And that is when sometimes our relationship with God suffers when we are dealing with emotional issues. And David was keenly aware that the presence of God was in his life. Amen. And even though he was said to have been after God's own heart, there were many things that made him know that God was with him. As I look back into his life, when Israel had a mortal enemy, by the name of Goliath. Whenever, and the way they would fight wars and wars in that day, was that you would get your strongest man. Each country would get its strongest man. They would fight each other. And the one that won the fight was the winner for the nation. 
Goliath was such a big brute. You would see him and everybody would run from him. And he would brag. Isn't there anybody in Israel bad enough to fight me? And David showed up and said to his brothers, what is this? All you cowards, because they were just trembling. Why won't one of y'all go out there and fight the man? No, we ain't gonna bother Goliath. I tell you what, I'll fight it. And he went to the king and said, let me fight him. I think his brother said, boy, you better shut up. You don't know Goliath. He said, ain't scared. The king could not change his mind. So he said, at least you ought to put on some armor. They tried the armor, but it was too big for David. David, what you gonna fight it with? My slingshot. With what? My slingshot. You asking for it. What makes you think that you could beat a giant like Goliath? David said one day, a lion attacked me and I killed him. And then there was a bear that wanted to kill me and I killed him. And with our God on my side, I'll take care of Goliath. David was well aware of the fact that life could bring you to some valleys. David became an instant hero and Saul, the king of Israel, when he heard how the women were praising David over him and he became afraid. He became jealous. And jealousy can make you do some crazy things. I wish I had a witness in here. Y'all trying to act like ain't nobody jealous in your life. Amen. Saul got so jealous that he wanted to kill David. And ironically, Saul's son, Jonathan, he and David were so close that Jonathan wanted David to know that I will stand by you and I will not let my father kill you. I know it made David feel good to know your friend who had a friend like that. But he said, let not Jonathan know this, that as surely as the Lord liveth, there is but one step between me and death. He knew 
that regardless of who is on your side, come on somebody, if God is with you, then they can't do you any harm. Another occasion in his life, when he and his men had been off fighting a battle, And when they returned triumphantly back home, the enemy had come in, burned their homes down, took their families with them. And the Bible says they cried so hard that there was not enough energy in them to cry anymore. These big old grown men were able to fight a battle, but they could not stand to lose their families. And then after the tears, they began to get angry. And they said, this is all David's fault. We are to stone and kill him. And it was such a crisis that I know that David needed somebody to console him. Have you ever been in a place but nobody was saying anything good to you. And you had to console yourself. That's what the Bible says. And nobody comforted him. And he had to encourage himself. There will come times in your life that you will be wishing and hoping for somebody to console you. But just in case you can't find anybody, you ought to be able to console yourself. Encourage yourself. Amen, somebody. Even though he knew that God was on his side, he still did some things that displeased God. But he seemed to know that God's love for him was deep enough to help him to make it through even his personal shortcomings. Aren't you glad to know that when you come short of the glory of God, that God doesn't turn on you? And God doesn't kick you out. I don't know about you, but I'm glad. Because knowing how good God is, and how good God has been to me, yet there are times I find myself coming short. David knew that while going through life's challenges, he did not have to worry. Why? Because he knew that as the, right, the, the New Testament writer said, Amen, that God has said that I will never leave you nor forsake you. 
that you may boldly say the Lord is my helper and I shall not fear what man shall do unto me. Amen. He knew that somewhere the child of God will have to face some evil deeds and people being against him. But he only had to say Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, because thou art with me. If there's something I've learned, it is the fact that there are some shadows of death experiences will come in everybody's life. Amen. Deadly automobile accidents. Drive by shootings. And so many young men now don't care anything about somebody else's life and they will kill you as fast as they can kill a roach and won't be anything to them and be proud of it but yet if David could stand here today he would say to you Whatever dangers you may have to face, if you love the Lord, you are assured that God is still with you. Some of us are saying, how can God be with me? with all of these things I'm going through. Come on, somebody. There are some valley experiences that some of you are going through right now. And I'm afraid some of us will be lost in the valley. Some of us will get to the point that you will say it's not worth it for me to try to live right. It's not worth it to serve God. Look like God would give me a break. And yet, it seems like God is not hearing us pray. Can I get a witness here? You will go through some valleys. Amen. And I'm grateful today that God has called me to be a messenger of hope. To children of God who have to go through the valleys of sickness. Some of you are sick now. And the news hasn't been good. Some of you lost the person that meant most to you in your life. And despite your prayers, they died anyhow. Some have lost your jobs. Some have lost your relationships and your homes broke up. 
and many of us going through depression amen and sometimes when I see people in pain and I know that the words that I say will not heal the wounds in their hearts amen but it's good for them to know that they can come to the pastor and because of a pastor's heart that he cares for me too. Amen. I heard a preacher say the other week when he was talking about Superman Amen. Who could bend steel, who could climb over buildings. He could do just about anything, change the course of mighty rivers. Y'all remember him, don't you? Superman. But what this preacher said was that he could not stay Superman always. He had to go back to being Clark Kent. That said to me that sometimes when I have been able to help people have a little more strength and courage and faith in their lives. When I get through, I have to put back on my Clark Kent clothes. This past week, when I've been rejoicing, over what I thought was great news. That we were nearing the end of COVID-19. Amen. I was praising God because we'd gone back in the building and the commentator said parenthetically now that COVID-19 seems to be under control there's another virus called the Delta virus and is more transmissible more dangerous than COVID-19. When I heard them say that, it knocked me back down in my Clark Kent clothes. I said, you mean I got to go through this again? And I thought of the nights that Lorraine and I have sat and cried. Me leaning on her, she leaning on me because so many of our loved ones in this church some I've shared with over 40 years. And they went and left us. And then I thought about Sister Jackie James, a member of this choir. And 
she had a niece that was run over by a car, killed her instantly. And the sister had to come by and see her mama lying dead. And she said, Pastor, can you give us some encouragement? And I called. And I let her know that if you need me, we're going to be right there. And after the phone call ended, I sank deeper into my Clark Kent's clothes. And you know when you get depressed, you start thinking about the loved ones you've lost. You start thinking about all of the trouble that you've been through. And I can be transparent enough to tell you, I got depressed. And I started thinking about my own personal illnesses. Things that I've gone through in my later life that I never had to go through with as a young person. And don't be looking at me strange. Because some of you are going through the same thing. Now don't tell anybody, I'm scared something's going to happen to Pastor White. No. The Lord is able to help me to bring into completion the things that he has placed in my hands. But even at that sometime you get depressed. I wish I had a witness here. I started thinking about less than two years ago they said you got to have an operation. Amen. And when I was to have that operation it was my thyroid and some of you might know what that's like it is through the thyroid every action in the rest of your body depends on it and somebody told me you'll never be able to preach again I thought about a friend minister of mine who had the act, who had the operation and couldn't speak for five years. And I said, Lord, what are you doing? And I just kept on painfully thinking. And I want to tell you this. Sometimes what you've been through will cause you to think painfully about what's going on in your life. Y'all might have quiet in here. As the person next to you, you're not asleep, are you? And the Lord then allowed me to think about some of my weaknesses. And the old enemy said to me, maybe the Lord is going to leave you now because you know you haven't been all right. Amen. And I started thinking about my past and all this week I prayed to the Lord I know you're trying to give me a message to give your people 
but why you got to do it this way? And the Lord said to me, because I want them to know that you don't have any special power you have to go through like everybody else. Amen. So I thought I would give you some symptoms of depression because some of us are going through depression and don't even know it. Number one, you start thinking painfully about things in your past. The heartbreak that you went through. And even though you've come through it, you, you think about it and you wonder what did I do to make this race so hard to run. And then you start thinking about prematurely your death. You start wondering, Lord, am I about to die? And you get away from it, but the next day or two that fear comes up again. Am I about to die? That is a symptom of depression. Then you get to the point that you don't want to be bothered with anybody, even the one that's closest to you. You, you get mad, you see them coming. Amen. You don't want to talk to anybody. You start staying in a dark room. You don't even turn the light on. And then you start losing interest in the way you dress. Come on, somebody. People have known you to always be meticulously dressed. Oh, I like the way I said that. You had every hair in place. There was not a wrinkle in your dress or suit. And you even walk in a small strut. But now, it seems like I don't want to get dressed. And you come out with your hair standing up on your head. And that same dress you've been wearing for a whole week. Everybody know you got more clothes, but you don't want to get into them. Preach white. I don't care what they think. This is the way I feel right now. And some of you are depressed. Don't get disturbed. Jesus got depressed. When he lost his friend Lazarus, Jesus ended up at his grave and Jesus wept. On another occasion, When Jesus looked out on the city of Jerusalem and said, Oh, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, how often would I have gathered you under my wings and you wouldn't listen to me? And I will not come back to you again till you say, Blessed is he who cometh 
in the name of the Lord. Sometimes you can get so depressed that without knowing it, tears will begin to come from your face. Some of you have heard me say, macho men and tears don't mix. Because when I was coming in the house as a child, mama looked at me and said when I was crying, wait a minute, you're mama's man. You don't cry. And many of us have grown up men thinking that if you cry, you're weak. But tears are not a sign of weakness. They are signs of pain. Are you all listening to me? The question is, what do you do when you're depressed? Number one. Learn how to share your pain with somebody who wishes you well. Now don't you run out there and tell your enemies. You better be glad that God can show you somebody that you know who really loves you. Listen, I might just talk to you today. Do you know why when you can meet some people and in about 20 minutes or half an hour you know their whole life story? They have been wishing for somebody to talk to. But because they know you are a stranger, they tell you everything because they know they won't see you no more. I'll tell you something else. Some people go to funerals and cry and it has nothing to do with the person down here. But at least they can come and cry and people won't think something wrong with them. There has to be a time that you can admit that you're hurting. And there has to be a time that you can share your pain. During these years of my ministry, I have sat by bedsides of people who were dying. And they shared some things that they never had told anybody. I've learned something else and this sermon is not going like it did earlier this morning. I've learned something else. I've taken an informal way of trying to figure things out for people who sometimes die too young. And I have come to the conclusion that those of us who are angry and bitter and cannot share our pain, it stays right inside. Now, it doesn't just stay there and do no harm. It's either you're going to be healed or it will turn into a cancer. 
and there are ways that pain has a way of affecting your physical body. Amen. And that's why it's good. To be able to share some pain. I don't know who I'm talking to today. I woke up early one morning, a week or two ago. And Lorraine said, what's wrong with you? I couldn't look at her. But before I knew it, my tears started coming. I didn't know how the pain of so many of my members that I hadn't gotten over. And I had to just tell her I'm hurting. And I've learned that God allows you to go through experiences to help somebody else when you see them going through the same things. She couldn't stop my pain. And I sure felt better. What am I saying to you? Sometimes you got to break down. And you got to let the Lord deal with you. Share your pain. Come out of that dark room. You've been going in there. You don't even want the light on in the top of the building. And you get in that bed and you cover up and you want to go just sleep away. And the enemy is glad to see you that way. Because he's saying to you, now you see that? You've been running around telling people that God loves you. If God loves you, why are you letting you go through this now? And if you don't mind, the devil will cause you to be even more depressed. Preach white. I know some of y'all trying to act like you sleep because you ain't saying a word. But let the redeemed of the Lord say so. When you come out of the darkness, you got to understand that there is a tendency for your depression to deplete chemicals in your system. That's why when you go to the psychiatrist and they give you what they call antidepressants. That's a synthetic medicine. That's something that man made. It is meant to re replenish in you those chemicals that depression have taken out of you. You take them, but and you don't feel quite so bad, but you still don't feel like yourself. You know why? Doctors often treat symptoms and not the root of the problem. If you learn how to get the root out, the symptoms will go away. The next thing, make sure you are getting your vitamins. 
it is a fact that most African Americans are deficient in vitamin D. Not B, but D like dog. Amen. And that is one of the vitamins that when you're not getting it, you start feeling dumb, dragged out. That's why some of y'all go get to the doctor and get a vitamin B complex shot. Call the energy. It's not there. Preach right. Why is it that way? That's because many of us do not recognize the fact that the sun has a love affair with the pineal gland in your head. Have you ever stepped outside and the sun is shining? You say, ooh, sure feels good out here. The sun is responding to your pineal gland. If you can't do it, you take your vitamins. I'm going to tell myself amen here. And then, don't stop praying. You can get to the point in your life that you just don't want to pray. All the praying I've done, it didn't help me. I know in the me, me talking to Pastor Wack, are you going to tell me to pray? I don't want to hear it. But let me tell you this. The only way that you can talk to God is through prayer. And the most powerful thing that you have in your arsenal against sin, Satan, the devil, and depression is the name of Jesus. Prayer involves the whole Godhead, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That when you pray to God, don't pray in your name, because your name ain't no good. All the time you messed up. That's why you have to pray in the name of somebody who has not messed up. Pray in the name of Jesus by the aid of the Holy Spirit. I'm trying to teach y'all something up here today. And when you pray, don't start trying to argue at God. Why haven't you come to see about me? Do you know how the best way for you to get in touch with God? You got to praise him first. I said earlier today, when your husband or your wife, or your girlfriend, or your whatever. When they are angry with you, praise them. I want you to try this. Y'all might have been arguing when you left home, but praise them. Sometime I'm around the house, and I'm not quite hitting on eight cylinders with Lorraine. I might be on five, but not eight. But when I get dressed, to get ready to go somewhere, I walk out, and she say, Woo, you are one handsome man. 
Así. Whether she means it or not, she just put an antidote into my anger. And I can't stay mad with her if she keeps on complimenting me. She knows it. She knows just what to say and when to say it. Sometimes I be determined I ain't going to be pleased. And she says I act like I ain't pleased. But on the inside I'm melting. So when I leave I said, baby, you want me to bring you anything? I'm trying to, I'm trying to help somebody in here. If you get mad and upset with your wife, your girlfriend, or your significant other, if you want her to respond in a positive way, compliment her. Tell her that even though There's a little more of you there now than you were when we got married. You still are the best thing that ever happened to me. Talk to me somebody. She's already been concerned about whether, what do you think because she hadn't gotten rid of the, all of that excess weight. What do you think? She's still attractive? Yeah, oh, mama, when you walk out of that room today, I felt like I did when I first met you. Listen, you're going to get a good meal that night. <laughs> and some other things. Well, anyway. <laughs> I'm trying to help somebody. Now, you've been going through some trouble in your life. And you've been going through a long time. To the point that some of us are just angry with God. And let me tell you, this God ain't scared of you. You can't change God because you angry. If you want God to respond to you in a positive way, praise him. I'm trying to give you the secret. Just praise him. Lord, I don't understand what you're doing, but I know that you never left me yet. Yea, though I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because I know you are still with me. How do I know he's still with me? Because everything I've been through, come on somebody, he's been right there. When I was in trouble, he brought me out. When I was broke, you made a way. And now when I look back over my life, I can't stay angry with God. Because God been better to me than I've been to myself. And when you begin to praise God, God will smile on you. And when God smiles on you, he got a blessing angel. And tell that blessing angel to stop by your house and be a special blessing in your life. But the Lord has told me to tell you today that what's going on in your life is not the end of you. Did you hear me? Some things 
you got to go through. If you didn't go through what you're going through, you wouldn't know that God is able to carry you through. And I'll get a witness here. The Lord told me to tell you today, hold on a little while longer. Help is on the way. Don't just look at your situation. Praise him for what he already brought you through. Praise him for what he's doing for you right now. Praise him for what he's about to do in your life. Because weeping may endure for a night. But joy is coming in the morning I've been here trying to tell you what the Lord will do and some of you are looking at me and won't even say a word you must don't know like I know what the Lord has done for you somebody ought to be shouting right now telling the Lord Lord I thank you for what you've done in my life Lord I thank you for making a way for me and I found out the more you praise it the more you stop thinking about your own situation praise him for where it brought you from. Praise Him for how He kept you. Praise Him because He never left you. The more you praise Him, the more He's going to bless you. I don't know about you, but I want to tell Him right now. Thank you! And I tell you something else. And we know. Did you hear me? And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love the Lord. Keep on holding on. It's working for your good. Keep on praising God. It's working it out. If you miss somebody, tell them he's working it out in your life. Somebody ought to praise him. Somebody ought to praise him. I don't know about you, but when I think about the goodness of the Lord and all he's done for me my soul my soul crying out hallelujah I thank the Lord for saving me when I was young yeah, Lord. When I listen to the secular song, I would like one of the singers said I would get on my good foot and then Well, since I've been saved, I'm still dancing, but I change partners. When you see me dancing. I'm praising the Lord 
when you see me clapping my hands I'm praising the Lord if the Lord been good to you go on and praise him glory glory Can anybody feel him right now? Tell him, thank you. Most of all, I want to thank him because I was on my way to a devil's head. But one Friday, they stretched him wide. They hung him high for you and me. He hung his head and died. But that's not the end of the story. Early! I said, early! One Sunday morning, he got up from the grave, saying, all oh, power, all oh, power, is in my hand and that's why I praise him even when I don't want to get out of depression but I can't help it that's why I want to tell you if you hear me and it seems like I'm not myself I'm not about to leave you because God is able to bring into completion the thing that he assigned in my hands to do but just tell somebody what he's doing is praising the Lord because he's leaning on something weeping may endure for a night the joy is coming in the morning you ought to tell somebody joy is coming in the morning and what I'm saying to you don't worry about me because I'll be alright and after we sing this song we're going to pray for you. We won't have you come to the altar because I've been directed that God can reach you right where you are. But we don't ever know what people are going through. But if you see me and you say, he's depressed, I want to tell you this. I'll be all right. I'll be all right after a while. Oh, boy, where there's ever, I'll be all right, all right. Oh Lord, I'll be all right. I'll be all. I'll be all right. After a while, over. Well, Oh, I 
Facebook or whatever way you're listening. He knew that you would be on your computer or that you would be coming to church. Deacon Linda Rounds came to me last Sunday. And with tears in his eyes, he said, I want you to know my family members in South and North Carolina and all up the seaboard, they stop and they listen to you on Sunday morning. They is back there, they is. And tears came in his eyes. He said, I just want to thank you for inspiring my family. I called your names before prayer. And I want you to know that God is working it out. Let's pray. 
Lord, we come now in the midst of pandemics, in the midst of Delta, knowing that you are stronger than any pandemic could ever be. So right now, we turn these problems over to you. And Lord, you heard every name that's been called. And we know you are in the fixing business. So we ask you now, fix it, Jesus. Fix it, if you please. And if you can't fix it here, I'll go down on my knees. Because we need you today. Sickness is in the family. We need you. Not enough money. Even pay our bills. Lord, we need you today. Somebody's been going through depression. Fix it today. And whatever it is that's bothering these, your children. Oh God, we beg you right now to have mercy on us. Teach us, oh God, that it all is working together for our good. So when we leave today, let us leave knowing that you have never left us alone. These and all other blessings we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now as you keep standing, there are a couple of things that I want to tell you.